Dear students, last time in the basic terms in zoology and those are terms which are used in the classification, we dealt with this very topic last time as well. And last time we discussed about the aquatic mode, we discussed about the terrestrial mode, we discussed about the different kinds of the aggregations, the terms used in the aquatic mode of life or aquatic organisms or, uh, or the terrestrial organisms, then the different kinds of aggregations and today we shall be dealing with the levels of the organization. We also call this as the grades of the organization, that what kind of the grades of the organization are present in different animals rightly from the protozoa up to the chordata. Now, we shall be talking about the levels of the organization or the grades of the organization. But before, it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel BioLearnia for the latest updates, press the bell icon and get the notification. First of all, we shall be talking about the first level that is a cellular or the protoplasmic grade of organization. Now, what happens in this very case? The our all an individual, an organism is a cell in itself. So it is covered by the single plasma membrane. So all the activities are taking place inside the plasma membrane. That is why we call it as the acellular grade of organization or the protoplasmic grade of organization. And this kind of organization is seen in the case of protozoans. So protozoans have the acellular grade of organization. Then number two, the second grade, that is the little bit more advanced grade. That is the cellular grade of organization. That is in this very case, the cells, there are different kinds of cells, but cells are not organized into tissues and, and the division of labor can be seen. And we do have the two different kinds of the cellular grade of organization in which one forms the colony such as the um, algae and the protists, they form the colonies. We do have the example in the case of the woolworks where they consist in number of the cells to form a colony. So in the cellular grade of organization, some of the organis organisms do form a colony such as a protist and algae. Then we do have the cell aggregate plan. Now what happens in this very cell aggregate plan that, that this plan is seen in the case of sponges. And here in this case that I told you that thou the cells they are not so much advanced that they form the tissues but they have the division of the labor different kinds of the cells do perform different functions and this is seen in the case of the porifers, porifers, porifera or we call them as the sponges. So the acellular grade of organization or the protoplasmic grade of organization is seen in the case of protozoa and the cellular grade of organization is seen in the case of porifera or the colonial that is the cellular um, colony grade organization that is seen in the case of the protist and the algae. Then we do have the little bit more advanced grade that is a tissue grade. Now what happens we all know that it is actually a first of all cell. Cell becomes cell aggregate to form the tissues. More similar cells performing the same function, they become tissues. And the tissues, they, the more similar tissues, they form the organs. And the organs do form the organ system. Organ system forms an organism. Different organisms, they form a population. The population, different populations, they form a community. And different communities in an ecosystem along with the abiotic factors, they form an ecosystem. And different ecosystems, they form a biosphere. Wherever there is, there are, there is life, there are living organisms. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, we do have the third one, the first one, the second one and the third one that is the tissue grade organization. We also call it as the cell tissue grade organization. Now what happens in this very case? Cells are specialized to form the uh, f form certain functions. They do perform certain functions uh, but but more cells, similar cells, they come together to form tissues. 
in the earlier case the tissues are not formed but in the tissue grade organization or the cell tissue grade organization the cells more similar cells they come together to form the tissues and such, such kind of um, you can say this organization is seen in the case of the sealant traits then the next level that is the fourth level is the organ system or organ tissue um, uh, level or we also called as the organ grade level or tissue organ level that is here in this very case in the all the multicellular organisms the body is having the tissues arranged to form the organs here in the organs are formed but the organ system is absent but the certain organs can be seen in in this very grade of the organization and this very organ grade that is the tissue organ level grade of organization it is seen in the case of the flatworms the next is the organ system grade of organization here in this very case multicellular organisms they show um, the organ uh, system grade of organization here in the different organs they 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 perform the similar function such as for example if some of these some of the organs they are involved in the excretion they form the excretory system in some of the organs they are involved in the digestion they form the digestive system and this very organ, organ system grade of organization is the most advanced one and is seen in the advanced invertebrates and all the chordates for example we do have the it is seen in the case of roundworms it is seen in the case of annelids it is seen in the case of mollusks it is seen in the case of arthropods echinodermata and chordata now from this in this very uh, term we came to know that the acellular or the protoplasmic grade of organization is seen in the case of protozoa cellular grade of organization is seen in the case of the protists algae and sponges or poriferans tissue grade of organization is seen in the case of sealant traits organ grade or the tissue organ um, level of organization it is seen in the case of the flatworms and the rest of all the classes such as the um, we do have the roundworms annelids mollusks arthropods echinodermata and chordata they all show the organ system grade of organization now we shall be talking about the body plan this is very important that we should be knowing the body plan that what kind of plan the organism has we do have the three kinds of the body plans that is the cell aggregate body plan blind sac body plan and tube within a tube body plan now what happens in the case of the cell aggregate body plan that there is little differentiation of the cells that is cells are not differentiated so this kind of the plan is seen in the case of the poriferous so the next plan we do have the blind sac body plan so what does it mean blind sac it is just like a sac which has only one opening so it has one opening and it is the mouth and the anus which function uh, which the same opening functions as the mouth and anus so it has only one opening which functions as the mouth and anus and this kind of uh, um, incomplete we call this very incomplete so this incomplete digestive system is seen in the case of the sealant traits so in the case of sealant traits we do have the blind sac body plan the third plan we call it as the tube within a tube body plan tube within a tube body plan so what happens in this case this very body wall that forms the outer tube whereas the alimentary canal that forms the inner tube so that is why we call it as the as the tube within a tube body plan so it has two openings one acting as a mouth and other acting as the anus now on this very basis the tube within a tube plan we do categorize the organisms in two types one we call them as the protostomes and other we call them as the deuterostomes pro pro means first pro means first and stomes stome means mouth so those very organism where the mouth is formed first from the blastopore uh, blastopore region if the mouth is formed first they come under the protostomes and the roundworms is the example of the protostome whereas all the higher organisms that is echinodermata and the chordates they are deuterostomes deuterostomes it means anus forms first 
from the blastopore region. So the blastopore region gives rise to the anus first and then later on the mouth is formed. So we, we as the higher caudates, we are deuterous stones. Echinodermata onward, all the organisms, they are mostly deuterous stones. Whereas the roundworms, they are the protostomes and we do have, that is the roundworms, echinoderms and the caudates, all the caudates, we we do have the tube within a uh, tube body plan because we have both mouth as well as the anus. In the case of cylindrates, they have the blind sac body plan because, because there is only one opening which is acting as the mouth and anus. And uh, the some other that is the earlier organisms such as porifers, they have a little differentiation of the cells. That is why we call as the cell aggregate body plan. Okay. Next, we shall be dealing with symmetry. When we say the arrangement of the body parts, on the opposite sides, we call this very as symmetry. If they are equal in size and shape, that is symmetry. If they are unequal, for example, this very hand is not equal to this very hand, this is not a symmetrical position. But if the hands are long enough, equal on the opposite sides, we call this as very as a symmetry. On the basis of symmetry, the organisms can be divided as the asymmetrical where there is no symmetry. Some kind of the sponges, they can be divided on this very basis wherein they do not, cannot be divided into two equal parts. That is why we call it as the asymmetrical animals. Then we do have the, we do have the spherical symmetry. For example, we take a ball. We take a ball that is a sphere. We can cut this very ball from any position, from upper side, from sideways, from the lower side, from the sideways. It can be divided into two equal balls. So that is why it is called a spherical symmetry. For example, this is a sphere. It can be divided into two equal parts from this very side. It can be divided into two equal parts from this very side. It can be divided into two equal parts from this very side and two equal parts from this very side. So that is why we call it as the symmetric, uh, as the spherical symmetry. And this very spherical symmetry is seen in the case of the corals because they are they are spherical in shape. Then we do have the radial symmetry. Now this is. Um, the cylindrical, this is a cylindrical animal, a cylindrical kind of the animal. Their oral and the aboral sides can be distinguished, but the other sides, for example, we do have the example in the case of the, uh, for example, we do have the cylindrates, for example. They can be divided from this very, they can be divided. If we cut from this very side, they can be divided. If we cut from this very side, they can be divided into two. If we cut from this very side, downwards, downwards. So we call this very as a radial symmetry. It is also called as a discoidal symmetry, wherein the similar parts do radiate from all the sides. Now the uh, question also arises that what kind of symmetry it is that the organism looks similar from all the directions around. Now, for example, in the case of the higher animals, we do have a brain, we do have the head which is present on the upper side and on the anterior side. So we have a well developed brain and we can detect the danger. We can move sideways abruptly so that we can face or we can evade and we can escape the danger. But in these very organisms, this very radial symmetry has to be developed. It was necessary to be developed so that they can have the idea of their environment from all the sides they can have the idea of the environment whether any kind of uh, predator whether any kind of danger is approaching to them or not so this is the radial symmetry and we can divide it into two equal parts from the upside down for example this is a pen we, I can cut it from this very side downwards, I can cut it from this very side downwards and it can be divided into two equal parts. And it has the oral side and it may be having the aboral side. 
So it is seen in the case of the cylindrates, it is seen in the case of the echinoderms, and we do have this kind of symmetry in the sedentary animals. That is, they are not so fast. They may be attached, or they may be they may be sessile. That is, which do not move very fast. So this kind of symmetry is found in the case of the uh, organ, and the similar kind of the biradial symmetry. Biradial. What happens in this very case? For example, in this very case, it can be divided into two equal parts from the any side, from any sides. It, that is why it is called as a biradial. So this very kind of the biradial symmetry is is found in the case of the sea anemone. We also uh, pronounce it by the name of the sea anemone, and many times it is pronounced as the sea anemone. So radial symmetry is found in the case of the cylindrates, echinoderms. And the biradial symmetry can be found in the case of the sea animal. Then we do have the more advanced, that is the bilateral symmetry. So in this very, what happens that it has a point of origin, it has a central axis from where the distal and the proximal parts do appear. The limbs, they emerge. And dividing the animal into two equal parts, for example, we in the case of the human beings, for example, we do, they have the, this way, we can cut the human beings into two equal parts, that is left and right part. So, that is why it has a central disc from where it can be divisible into two equal parts, but from the mid-sagittal plane. mid sagittal plane, it is from the upside downwards. So, this is the sagittal. Now, in this very case, we do have the dorsal side. Dorsal side, it means the upper side, that is the back side. We do have the ventral side, that is this very side, that is opposite to the back. We do have the lateral sides, that these are the lateral sides, left uh, side and the right side. Then we do have the anterior side, that is this side, anterior one. And we do have the posterior side. For example, in the case of animals which do walk on the four legs, they have the anterior side, they do have the posterior side. Like we do have the proximal. Proximal, this, this very, that is the central disc, this is the proximal part. And this, the, which is away from the body, we call this very as the, as the distal part. So the limbs are the distal part, the spinal cord is the uh, proximal, um, uh, proximal part. So uh, this very bilateral symmetry, it emerged due to cephalization. Now, it is the emergence of the head, it is the evolution which led to the formation of the head and that is why this very bilateral symmetry arose and this is the more advanced kind of the symmetry.